bit serious. Come on, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, good to have you here at uh, at Alberton. Uh, absolutely delighted to uh, welcome Warren Treadray onto the uh, board of the Port Adelaide Football Club, the latest member elect. Um, a really active uh, campaign, an election campaign. Over ten thousand people voted. Came down to uh, uh, one hundred and ninety nine vote difference. Um, it signifies the passion of Port Adelaide members, which we love, uh, and we're really grateful to have two leg legends of the club who are really willing to come and play a more active role in the operation of the, of the club. We are looking forward to having uh, Warren's football skills on the board, legend of the club. Um, we're at a stage where we're a good club and have been a good club for years. Uh, we want to become a great club and take that next step forward um, to hopefully a premiership in the not too distant future and we look forward to, to Warren helping us with that. Um, also uh, a big thank you to Bruce Abernathy for, um, uh, for putting his hand up in the election. I've spoken to Bruce, um, I've asked him to join one of our committees and be actively involved. Um, he's a bit distracted being a first-time grandfather in the last 24 hours, uh, but we really look forward to having Bruce as, as a legend of the club be more actively involved and joining the likes of Don Cassis, who's been on our football committee for a number of years, uh, and we really welcome that. So, uh, Warren, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, David. Um, yeah, it's obviously an honour bloke who uh, grew up here at I think at five years of age is my earliest memory so for, for me to step into the role and to get voted by the members thank you and um, yeah uh, it's great that Abba can stay involved in the footy club as well but um, yeah it's been a, a nice initiation the first few hours I've sat in on my first board meeting not officially just watching and there's plenty going on and um, some good things and things that the club can be excited about. Happy to take questions. Is, this, uh, is there any awkwardness at all for you? No awkwardness, absolutely no awkwardness at all. Um, uh, our members are really educated supporters. Um, we made a decision that legends of the club to get on the board because so many want to. And this is the first time we've had two legends compete against each other. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had, had six people uh, running for the board election. We can't control that. Um, I am welcoming and absolutely happy for anyone that the members elect, but also for any past player to be involved in the club intimately as well. So you know, that's what we are. We're a community club with a great history, with a great history of players and supporters who want to be actively involved. Okay. So, Sorry, so given the you know, last year, maybe the last two years, I mean, how do you and or have you smoothed things over? I mean, how do you kind of smooth things over now that you're working together closely? Oh, I don't think there's been a need to smooth anything yeah. over. Um, yeah, when you're in the media industry, it's a, an opinion-based industry, and, and, and you get that when you work in that space, that not everyone's going to like those opinions, and I was pretty strong in my opinions. Um, but I faced that opportunity to, when the first opportunity didn't eventuate, to sit back and recalibrate what I'm going to do. And I thought, in my space, in my life, um, a chance to put you where your money, where your mouth is, and go. You know what? I want to help my club. I think I've got something to offer. And part of that journey, I, I noticed that Port Adelaide was the only board that didn't have a former player, either as a CEO or a board member. And I thought I've got something to offer. Throw my hat to the members, and I was fortunate enough um, to get a phone call. Was it late last night or the night before? Everything's been moving pretty quickly. Um, <laughs> that I got a, a good result. So, um, and David called me with that great result. I was pretty happy. Um, the kids are happy. One son doesn't know what it really means. The other one's really happy because he loves going to the footy. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to getting my hands dirty and, and, and getting involved in, in the board and helping out. And, and, and uh, can, I, can I just add, we argue all the time on the board. So, um, Warren and I will be arguing, continue to argue as well because we're passionate about the club. We have ideas, we, we want the club to get better. So it doesn't mean you don't like the bloke, 
you just have a different opinion. And so you discuss it and do what's best for the club. What do you, what do you think about how? Can it be seen as divisive, having two greats go head to head, forcing them to choose? Um, don't forget, we don't decide who runs in the member election. Um, as I said, this is the first time to, and Cathy Nagel, uh, who is our existing member elect director, was going to run, but then had to step out for work reasons. So we just thought, leave it up to the members. We didn't, the club didn't decide who was going to run in the member election. So it wasn't divisive to us at all. It's just what the members wanted. And, and the people who nominate. But I guess there was an opportunity last year with, with um, Darren Cahill's vacancy for Warren to come into the board as, I guess, not a member elected okay. person. I mean, oh, no. is that something you're going to look at, I guess, more in the future, make sure the club rates have to go through the member election, kind of get a member elected path? No, uh, but that's what, what I said last yeah. year, to go, go through member election because, okay, who do I choose between Bruce and Warren, who both come want to come on the board. Now, we have a vacancy on the board, but also there are a lot of other skills that you need on a board, and there's diversity that you need to have on the board. So we have a, you know, um, an issue of gender balance now, but um, uh, because we have a female director dropping off and a, a male coming on, so I've got to address that. There are a lot of moving parts in in putting a board together. One name you kind of mentioned before, who's on the one of the subcommittees, Don Cassisi, he's kind of been flagged that he might be in line for a board at some point in the future. It, will he have to go through the member election? Yeah, yeah, if he, and uh, just like Gavin had to go through, like George Fiacci had to go through as well. What do you think the, the closeness of the vote says about your fan base at the moment? Okay, what, what, what the closeness and the number who voted um, reflects a passion of Port Adelaide members. Um, it is a club with members that are football educated, that are passionate, have an opinion, and we love them for it. Um, and it will never change. It's part of Port Adelaide's DNA. That's, <laughs> you know, um, you only have to know that when we lose. Um, to realise how it really stings and, and the passion. So I'm, may we never lose that. I think it's, it's, it's the magic of Port Adelaide, that there is, there is a commitment, there's a buy-in, there's a love for their club. And as a director, you've got to, we take that incredibly serious and respectfully as well, because we're, we're guardians of a club that people love. Do you think there's a little bit of a split there, and do you see a way that you can close that gap? Oh, I'm, I'm not, no, I don't believe it's a split. I think the most passionate thing about poor people when they're, they're agitated and go quiet, the crowds don't go quiet. They get into the players. It's always been the way ever since I was five to when I played to now I sit in a commentary box and watch the games. Um, I, I think from some of the stuff I've just seen in it would suggest it's not the case in the boardroom. Um, and it's quite exciting. You know, for me, having a perspective from outside to inside, um, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be very interesting. But me being a member elect, and effectively, if I wanna continue to do this role long term, I have to represent their thoughts on the board. You know, and that goes from all sorts of different things, to Guernseys, to logos, to uh, membership prices, to engagement, to family days, to everything. And more, most fundamentally, my skills I bring, some media skills, I'm the football person on the board. Rob Snowden is the football former manager, you know, strategist on the board. You know, David's obviously got his skills in media and finance and, and, and governance and all that. So everyone brings a different set of skills. And my job is to somehow help Ken Hinckley, his coaching crew and Chris Davies ideally would be amazing to win a 20 year anniversary from when we won the premiership back in 2004. It'd be nothing better for poor fans to celebrate that at the end of the year if things go well. So it's about helping and, uh, and certainly not hindering, like many people are trying to suggest. Has anything, anything changed for you being a fan, going from being a fan and a legend to a board member? Do you have to toe the line? Oh, oh no, no, I probably need to take a little bit more of a breath. Um, but passion's good. 
if you if you get if you get crucified for showing passion and care and integrity and honesty, I think we're we're not doing it right. There's nothing wrong with that. I guess there's some fans who will see you as a kind of you know agent for change kind of thing. I guess if they want if they want change, I mean, what can you do? I mean, what do you hope you can do? I guess can you come in and you know like? You no, know. But it's it's for me. It's, it's straight away people will say it's about change. It's about trying to get success. This club has existed in premierships. It's now 20 years since we won our last one. They're not easy to win. And history would say Port's been pretty close the last few years. Um, so if anything, uh, you offer your expertise to try and somehow help the people who are paid to do their jobs to get that result. And, and none better than the players. I know as a player, as a player, we didn't get involved in board votes or discussions or governance or anything, you're there to be a professional athlete. And that's no different to the players and coaches. My job is to support them. Um, but at some stage, tough decisions have to be made in all areas of the business. Hmm. It's, it's a hard line in, like it's a hard line to toe sometimes being a board member and being in the media. David, have you kind of spoken to Warren about any advice? I can see that you can and can't say it. Oh, no, no, we're, we're, we're pretty clear. We have a, a board charter of behaviours and beliefs and values. Uh, every board member has to sign off on that. So board discipline is is really important because we, we've got plans out for the next 10 years. So um, it's, I don't have an issue with it at all and, and extremely confident that, uh, that Warren will be able to balance that. But you know, we've got our AGM on later tonight um, we have uh, record membership, uh, we have um, record commercial revenue coming in, into this club, uh, we've spent $30 million on the redevelopment. They're all signals that we don't have a divisive club at all. We've got a club that is breaking records off the field left, right and centre. So everyone comes together because we have a common cause and a common love and a common passion for this club. Have you spoken to Kenny? Uh, not individually, but Kenny did present um, with Chris Davis today. Uh, yeah. How is your relationship just in general? Well, um, well, we'll grow that relationship. Previously, it's only ever been as a commentator and him being a coach. So that is, that's one of the things you will work, work towards over the period. Um, and, and, and to, to be completely transparent, my role was a governance role on the board and overlook football and ask the appropriate questions that I deem fit for the best interest of the club. And Ken's role is to get as many wins as possible in premierships for the club. We're under no illusions um, what we both want. I guess with those, the comments you made last year, which I guess even though the team went on a 13 match winning run, you still said, you know, kind of, kind of owned. I mean, how does that kind of that hang over you when you come in in some way? Or? Oh, I, I don't think. I, I, I was open at the time, my thoughts. We, we've all, we're all grown men, we've moved on from there. And, and I'm here to support it. Um, and, and support the club and, and give back to the club that gave me a lot. Are you fully backing him for that? So, so how do I? Are you fully backing him? You get yeah, he signed money. a two-year contract with the club last year. Yep. So, yep. You know, you previously said his position's untenable. He's, but he's since signed a two-year contract at the club. So he's a contracted coach at the club. How and the club has unanimous support in him. How do you reflect on those comments? Now, obviously, it made a big, a big stir. How do you reflect on them? Sort of well, they're my honest comments at the time. Yeah. Have but... They changed? Huh? Have they changed your opinion? Well, I'm not going to be giving you any headlines today, if that's what you're wanting. Of course they are. No, no. I, I, no I'm, I have, I'll have my, my strong thoughts. Um, around any discussion we need to have inside the football club. And, and that's effectively, I think that's what our members have voted for. They want someone to ask the questions that need to be asked at the right time. Otherwise, I wouldn't be standing here. You, you don't see this result dated as anti-camp in any way? No, not at all. Because remember, it is, um, there were two terrific candidates. Um, we have 60, 65,000 members. Uh, 10,000 of them voted, uh, 55,000 decided not to and were happy with the way things are going. Um, 
the really active members decided they wanted to have a say in the makeup of the board going through, and um, it was pretty evenly split, um, and the best person won. When so, you, last couple guys. When you feel that done the vacant spot for Darren? Like uh, we will uh, remember we had the vacant spot back then as well, so we didn't leave it vacant after Darren left. We always had had nine in case we needed to change strategy and bring in a director uh, that had particular skills that we were we were lacking at the time. Um, as I said earlier, I will definitely now fill that spot with a with a female director to rebalance from a, um, uh, a gender and diversity uh, point of view uh, for the board, which I think any modern board does. What's that 10% do you think the board's been missing over the last few years? Oh, I could give you an answer on that. The mod role is governance now. So that's for people to find. I don't think they're far away. Oh, I'm actually really excited about um, I think there's elements in my in my thoughts and being a player that I think I'll bounce off people, but that's not for public consumption. Um, but yeah, I don't, you can't play in what the last three three of the last four final series um, without being far away. Yeah, you know, we were a team many years ago that led the comp and didn't get there for two or three years, and then learned a valuable lesson and was successful. So I don't think much is you know you don't need to. You don't throw it all out when you're winning a lot of games of football. How public are you planning on being this year, Warren, with your media, <coughs> with media roles now that you're on the board? Uh, I'll work with 5AA again. I'm contracted for that. So I'll commentate some games of footy and um, talk about performance-based stuff. Certainly not board-based stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I also get told off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone.